If you're not already a journaler and I said we could all use some sort of journal in our lives, it might conjure up images of locked books tucked under a mattress to keep prying eyes away, or color-coded planners. But journals are much more useful than just as places for childhood secrets or calendar events. Like, I have a few types of journals, including a dream journal in the notes app on my phone that I keep for weird story ideas. Journal writing of all kinds lets writers keep track of important information, understand themselves better over time, or even connect with readers all over the world who enjoy their work. The word journal comes from root words for day and has been used for actual centuries to refer to records over time. Sometimes religious sermon notes, sometimes accounts for a business, and other times as a personal record of thoughts or experiences. Journals, even a long time ago, were a lot more than just a notebook with a little plastic lock on it. And now, the word is used in many contexts. There are even a slew of different ways to create a writer's journal, which is the type of journal we'll focus on today. We'll talk through how to identify the qualities of a particular kind of journal and how to successfully write them. Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Zarka, and welcome to Study Hall Rhetoric and Composition. Here on Study Hall Rhetoric and Composition, we talk a lot about writing. But we also believe that one of the best ways to become a stronger writer is to practice. So throughout this series, we're going to have special episodes where we look at the kinds of skills needed to write some particular kind or genre of writing. First up, journals. Like I already mentioned, a journal is pretty much any way we record stuff over time, which is intentionally pretty broad because there's a wide variety of journals. Like a temperature blanket could be thought of as a type of journal, where we record the average daily temperature of a place over time. But when they're focused on writing, journals are usually collections of shorter writing pieces, though not always. Some journal entries can be quite long. They're often not as formal as other writing, though not always. Some journals are outward facing and are intended to clearly communicate with others in a formal context. And they often come with a particular theme, though not always. It's possible to switch topics in a journal. So rather than focusing on a single rigid definition of what a journal is, we're going to focus on writer's journals, what we want them to accomplish and how to adapt the journal to serve that goal. In particular, setting up and working on a writer's journal is a great way to practice identifying the purpose or what we want to accomplish of our writing, which we discussed more in our episode, What Writing is For. And we can all have different purposes. Like, I might want to keep a journal where I record the horror movies I watch and my reviews or analysis of them in order to use writing as reflection and deepen my understanding of the genre. But our producer Sheridan or our editor Madeline, who are less into horror, might keep journals to use writing as reflection, but instead record what they're grateful for in order to practice more gratitude, or important quotes or pieces of writing in order to reflect on them later, even though they're wrong and horror is the best genre. Whatever it is, identifying our purpose helps us sustain our writing, since even on days when we don't feel much like writing, knowing what we want to accomplish can keep us motivated. Our purpose can also help us figure out other qualities of our journal, like frequency or how often we write in it. Some journals are daily or even hourly, like when a new parent is really sleep deprived and writes down every time a baby eats to remember when to feed them again. Other journals are still installments, but they're more infrequent, like maybe you write monthly or even a couple times a year. As a writer, frequency should help us achieve our purpose, but we'll probably find that consistency helps more than anything else. It's all about establishing a routine that works for us. The third element to consider when creating a journal is the platform, or where and how we put words down, be it physical or digital. And our purpose can help us figure this out too. Like if our goal is to remember what we've been learning during a yoga teacher training and to use writing as reflection, we might want to take notes in a paper journal to avoid screen time distractions. Since the purpose is to keep reflecting on what we're learning, it also makes sense for the journal to be private, not on a public platform. There are a lot of other options though. Some people create journals or blogs on social media sites or online publication platforms, even though there's a chance that people might read them, or they might even go viral and be read by millions. In fact, some people's purpose, like to advance or become a notable expert in a particular career or to make money as a popular writer, might actually require a public platform. Identifying our purpose, frequency, and platform needs can set us up for success even before we start writing by helping us establish a journal that works for us and our lives. 
and journals are inherently flexible, but there are some classic types we can consider. Like a personal reflective journal is one of the most recognizable styles of writers' journals. It's a personal record of days, experiences, or thoughts. And even in a personal reflective journal, which sounds fairly straightforward, our purpose can guide how and what we write. Like in some ways, this kind of journal can be a form of externalized memory, where we write facts that happen in order to remember them later on. But usually, it's also a place for interpreting and even taking action based on our reflection. Like, if I wrote down the key parts of a fight I had with my brother, that could just be a memory for later. But if I realized that he was actually making some decent points, I'd be interpreting the events in a new way. I might even be moved to action by my reflections, maybe to apologize or concede his points. Though I'm sure just as often I'd conclude that I'm in the right. Either way, within personal reflective journals, there are a variety of frequencies. Some people make journaling a daily activity, while others write occasionally and just focus on times when they know they want to reflect on a series of events or thoughts. And while frequency can vary, the platform is consistently private, like an online document no one else has access to, or a paper journal. Personal reflective journals are also usually informally written and use whatever ways of writing feel the most natural to the writer. A related but more specific kind of journal is a student reflection journal, where we record and reflect on what we're learning during a course. They can be public or private, since some classes promote sharing these journals as a way to share all that we're learning. And it'll be more formal than a typical personal journal, since there are often guidelines from a teacher even if the teacher isn't reading it. Still, a student reflection journal shares the short, frequent entries that are characteristic of many kinds of journals, and writing regularly or semi-regularly tends to be a big part of student reflection journals. Another valuable kind of journal is a professional record of work, where we keep track of workplace accomplishments and experiences. A professional record of work is a good way to remember all that we do in our professional lives. Sure, some jobs don't have a lot of variety, but whenever we do things like take a leadership role, solve a problem independently, or collaborate well, we should write it down. And when we go to review our performance with a boss, or when we go to write a resume to get a new job, we'll need to reflect on what we've done in the past and how it will move us into our next work goals. Part of why some people struggle to ask for raises or apply for promotions is because they can't instantly think of a good reason why they deserve these things. So even though the frequency might be more sporadic, a professional record of work allows us to reflect on our work to gain material benefits, but also to steer our own courses. When we look back on our record of work, we might realize an area of passion or the things we enjoy most. This can shape how we pursue new responsibilities or what kind of roles we look for in the future. A professional record of work can be in a private platform, like a Google Doc or paper notebook that you don't share with anyone. But you can also use a professional networking platform, like LinkedIn, to both address your purpose of remembering your experiences and also make them visible to people looking for your combination of skills. Finally, another possibly public kind of journal would be a blog or any other series of short, regular writing pieces that are published for an audience, often online. We're using blog here, but keep in mind that short video platforms like YouTube and TikTok can be forms of video journals that serve some of the same purposes. Many writers begin blogs assuming that not a lot of people will ever read them, only to grow so popular online that they become their main job. They always knew they were writing publicly, but didn't count on grand success. This sort of journal can have a variety of purposes, from reflection and personal growth to directly working to draw customers in, like when a law firm creates a blog full of information about different legal topics for potential clients to read. Or many writers who choose to publish a blog online do so to create a brand, which often includes a recognizable voice and way of writing that grows a following. The hope is often to monetize or find a way to make money while writing a personal blog, which in 2022 is most common on platforms like TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube. So by their nature, blogs exist on a public platform and are formal enough to reach a wide audience, even if they come across as conversational and approachable. And they're often published with very consistent frequency, like if the audience expects a new post every other Monday. So whether it's a deeply personal reflective journal or a record of our school or work lives or a public blog or something completely different, there are lots of forms a journal can take. Journals can help us understand ourselves, retain key information about life to use in important moments in our work or schooling, and even build a profitable brand. In fact, there's nothing that says we have to limit ourselves to just one kind of journal. 
Like take Elijah, who's always dreamed of traveling. So when he decides to backpack after high school, he wants to be able to remember his experience as well. At first, he thinks that he'll write a personal reflective journal, but he chooses to post it online for a few reasons. He doesn't want to have to carry a paper journal, and he knows his friends want to see the pictures he's going to take. So he opts for a blog, writing about his exciting experiences for a public audience rather than only for himself. He ends up using some of his personal sense of humor and his conversational way of writing and builds a loyal following. Over time, the numbers of visitors to his blog are enough that he's able to earn money through having ads on his blog and eventually travel blogging and building his brand becomes his full-time business. As his work life as a traveler continues, he starts to keep a professional record of work behind the scenes in a personal notebook, including how long he's consistently maintained the blog, his skills with creating online videos about travel, and how he coordinates with a website designer. Looking at his professional record of work a few years into travel blogging, he realizes that some of his favorite experiences have been when he gets to collaborate with others. So he chooses to go back to school, studying for a business writing degree that focuses on collaborative writing with a team. While in school, he frequently has to draft entries in a student reflection journal that he shares with his classmates and professors, furthering his understanding of collaborative writing. Through it all, Elijah adjusts his frequency, purpose, and platform to accomplish the goals he's working toward at the time. And with this awareness, we know he's going to go far. Well, maybe that's just all those frequent flyer miles. Ultimately, journals focus on what we do, think, and experience. We can return and find what we need all in one place, be it to reflect on our experiences, choose a new direction at work, or even build a brand. So even if you've never been the journal type before, I encourage you to give some sort of writer's journal a try, if only to keep growing as a writer. Thanks for watching Study Hall Rhetoric and Composition, which is part of the Study Hall Project, a partnership between ASU and Crash Course. If you liked this video and want to keep learning with us, be sure to subscribe. You can learn more about Study Hall and the videos produced by Crash Course and ASU in the links in the description. See you next time.